Hi everyone, welcome to some questions on our canes. So, this first question here, we've got some information about some cycle or canes, got a skeletal formula, boiling points. First question is asking us what is meant by the term homologous series. So, again, a couple marks for this, but this is just purely definition. So, you have roughly 8 to 10% of your marks and come from definitions. So if you know your definitions, then great, it's two easy marks. If not, you can make sure you go away and know what your definitions are. So for this, we need something along the lines of same functional group, so a series of compounds, same functional group, or similar chemical properties. Something along those lines to begin with. And then we also need to then say, for that second mark, successive member differing by CH2. So again, if you know your definitions, nice and easy to start things off with. If not, make sure you go away and get your definition sorted out. Following on from this, again, same information that's there. Part two says state the general formula for these cycloalkanes. Now, again, how are you going to do that? Well, it's only worth a mark, so we're not trying to push things too far. You can work it out from the skeletal formula that's there. You can easily count up your carbons and then know how many hydrogens are going to be attached to each carbon. You can do all that, but if you know what's going on and do it nice and quickly, you can just simply have a CnH2n. Now, even though it is alkanes, people are thinking, well, it'll be CnH2n plus 2. But if you actually look at, say, the skeletal formula, let's say we take this one here, we've got a carbon there, one there, and one there. So we've got three carbons. And then because each carbon is bonded, has two of its bonds going to other carbons, it has two bonds left for hydrogens. So each carbon will have two hydrogens. You have two, four, six hydrogens for three carbons. So it would be C3H6. So it would be CnH2n. So yes, that is the general formula for an alkene as well, but is also our general formula for our cycloalkenes. Okay, part three. Explain the increase in the boiling points to make sure we know what we're talking about, increase the boiling points in the table. So we have minus 33, 49, and then we've got 81. Okay, so why are they increasing? So you don't get a mark for saying, as you go down the table, the boiling points increase, because the questions already told you that. So don't waste your time doing that. Now, one thing we can notice as we go from the top down to the bottom there, down the table, that is, that these cycloalkanes we're having more, more and more carbons. Because like we said before, it's been the same series, so we're adding a CH2 each time, which we're going for. So we have more carbons. We've got a bigger structure as we're going from top to bottom. So because we have more carbons, we then have more points of contact that's going on. So therefore, we've got more Van der Waals forces or more London forces that are going on. So the more of those forces you have, the, high, the more you have to overcome so therefore, the higher the boiling point is going to be. And then, just make sure we just mention those boiling points. So, more carbons, more points of contact. You've got more your Van der Waals. Van der Waals is more sort of old money now. I tend to say London forces. So, we've got more of those. Therefore, more to overcome. So, therefore, we get a higher boiling point. So, two marks for those two points there. Okay, and to finish off with, we've got some multiple choice questions. So which molecule has the highest boiling point? So again, just making sure, again, always good to highlight things in the question, just to make sure, because you never know. You know, in that certain you know moments of high pressure, you might do something daft. So we've got those four molecules there. Highest boiling point. Well, this is what we need to know. Again, this if you don't know this, then you've got, you have no you have no chance, unfortunately, of being able to answer it. The more branching that you have, the few points of contact you can have, so therefore, the lower boiling point you're going to have. So the higher the boiling point, it's not going to be particularly branched. Linear is much better than branched. So the more branching you have, the worse it is, if you like, for the boiling point. So we're looking at which one has the least amount of branching going on. So the least amount of branching for this would be B, just 2-methyl heptane. So we have our, our heptane, our linear 
molecule, but then just with a methyl group on the second carbon. Again, that's the least amount. Yeah, we've got three ethyl pentane there, but an ethyl group is quite a bit. It's much more, that's more branching really than it's a bigger branch than a, just a straight methyl. So highest boiling point, the least branching. So going for B there. Question three, which organic compound has the lowest boiling point? Again, let me just highlight or underline what we're looking at. So lowest now for this one, same argument, but in reverse. So for this one, we're kind of looking for which one has the most um, branching, if you like. Now, this one here, we're going to go for A. You can just simply see by, we've got, for A, we've got trimethyl, so we've got three lots of methyl groups. For B, we've only got two lots, that's less branching. For the next, for C, only got one lot of branching, and then for D, don't have any branching. So, reverse argument from the question from before. Lowest boiling point, looking for the most branch that we got, so therefore that would be A. Okay, and that will do it today with our questions on alkanes. See you next time.